Tom, it is such an honor to have you here with me on Misunderstood. How are you? I'm fantastic. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So are you in New Jersey now? Where Where are you? I'm in Kentucky, of all places. <laughs> My girlfriend is doing her emergency medicine residency in University of Cincinnati. So we're just over the Ohio River in a little house in Kentucky. Oh my God, I love that. Okay, I have a million questions about how you have dated during this whole process. But <laughs> well, actually, let's start with that since you brought it up. How, how did you meet this woman? So we met on the tail end of my seven-year walk. We met in Washington State. I had been kind of dating, seeing this Turkish girl, and she was going to school in the state. She flew back to states. I kind of fell apart. And then I started walking from Seattle on the seven-month walk across the U.S., the last leg. And in a little mountain town after the Northern Cascades National Park, I and I ran into her and we hit it off and she was doing this little internal medicine rotation there and it was Labor Day weekend. So we spent like five days together and then she kind of followed me around as I was walking, you know, 24 miles out a day. She came and met me for dinner and then she came out to this other town um, another weekend and then she had a rotation in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and she drove all the way up to Idaho to see me. And then she drove out to Wyoming to see me. And then, so uh, yeah, we just, we met and we we hit it off. And then she kind of followed me around uh, the US as I walked across it. Oh my God, I love that. Okay, yeah. she sounds amazing. So good luck with all that. She is much more amazing than I am. <laughs> oh God, that's so nice. Um, all right, well, let's start at the beginning. I found you on Instagram, like a lot of people did because they started following your journey in general, my, you know, I fell into, you know, watching you, I guess at the end, because I saw, um, you know, what was going on with you and Savannah, your dog. Um, and that was heartbreaking. It was terrible to watch. And I found that I kept checking in to see how the dog was, because I think for a while you were posting about her being sick and you were hoping she would get better. And it was terribly heartbreaking when she didn't make it. So I'm so sorry for your loss. Dogs are, you know, uh, very special to me. I think I like them more than people. And to lose an animal I know is one of the most, if not the most painful thing ever and very hard to get over. So I, I have so much empathy for what you went through, knowing that you spent her entire life, um, you know, you guys were together and you guys were best friends. Yeah, I mean, it was the worst week of my life when she was sick. I just had this like ax in my head, basically, this constant headache you know, trying to problem solve this problem that wasn't really fixable. And so, yeah, and then afterwards, it was obviously incredibly painful. But, you know, like you said, we spent basically every minute of every day together for her whole life after I adopted her. And we had this amazing life together. She lived an amazing life. First dog to walk around the world. She saw the world. She smelled the world. You know, she ran across the world. So she had a, a great adventure. You know, she it was, she was nine years old when she passed, which is obviously younger than I would have liked. But in a certain way, she kind of never had to grow old. She got sick really suddenly and she did her job in a certain way. She saw yeah. through what we were out there to do. And she then, I guess, passed me off into uh, the next chapter of my life. Yeah. Um, what ultimately was it that killed her? What What was she sick with? It was kidney failure. Uh, but... Probably they don't know, but probably like Lyme nephritis. Mm. Uh, that's so, you know, we were just bitten. Both of us were bitten by probably 10,000 ticks on the road. You know, there's most nights I'd wake up with a tick on me or something and pull it off. And even on the medication, uh, tick prevention, she got sick down in Chile with, um, I can't remember what it's called, but she got really sick with that. And, um, and then so she probably picked up Lyme somewhere along the way and right. then she's predisposed to Lyme nephritis and then she's kidney failure ultimately. Got it. Um, all right. Well, let's start at the beginning because I think a lot of people are fascinated with why you did this, how you did this. So let's um, start at the beginning. And I know Savannah was not part of the plan when you first started. So my first question is what made you decide you wanted to walk around the world? And was that what you set out to do? Or did you just say, let me go hike for a little bit? Yeah, it started off with a friend of mine, a close friend of mine dying when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And it was just very formative for me. I'd never been close to someone who passed away before. And also the thing about my friend's death, Anne-Marie, was that I had known my whole life that she was 
way kinder than I was, way more intelligent than I was, way more driven than I was, way more thoughtful than I was. And so when she died, it really hit me in the core that, oh, like it doesn't matter who you are or what you do, you can go at any moment and it can happen at any time. And of course, you know that intellectually growing up, but it wasn't until she passed that I really felt it and understood it. Mm. And so then it forced me to integrate the idea that you can go at any time into how do I live? And so I reflected for months on what do I want out of life? What are the primary things? If I only get one shot of this, what are the primary things I want to get out of life? And ultimately I came to the answer, wanted to travel, wanted to be forced into adventure and wanted to understand the world. And so then I just really started looking for different ways to travel, to satisfy that. Initially it was backpacking Europe with my cousin and that kind of fell through. But then while I was down these rabbit holes of internet travel, I discovered these two guys who had walked around the world. And then that was like, as soon as I saw that, it was the light bulb went off. It's like, oh, this fulfills everything that I want. You know, it would be the slow form of travel. If I was afraid of a town that was up ahead or people warned me about a town that was up ahead, I had to pass through it anyway. You know, it wasn't like I was on a bike or in a car, I could just blow by it. And I wanted that. I wanted that difficulty to, to force myself into growth. And also I didn't have any money. And so that was an easy way to travel with no money. And so it was when I began, it was eight years after I first had the dream of walking around the world. I went to school, saved, lived at home, paid off loans, all that. But the intention was always to walk around the world. It wasn't just a hike. And, and part of that was because I wanted the big adventure. I wanted my life to be changed by this adventure. I didn't want it to be a one-off, you know, even a walk across America felt like it was too small for me because it wouldn't structurally change my life. It'd be a great adventure, but I wanted this to be, you know, something enormous. Right. So how do you plan for something like that? You said you didn't have a lot of money at the time. So how did you even start with that? And how much do you have to have to go on something like that? You don't need much. I think when I was intending to leave, this was when I was 25, I had, I think, just like $25,000 saved. And I figured I could bleed that out for two years and hopefully get a sponsor. And I still had student loans to pay off at that point. But the planning really, there's not too much you can do. I mean, especially then, I think there's more world walkers now. There's more people, not that there's a ton of them, but there's a few more doing it now than when I began. And so it's not like you can like look up and like, how do you walk around the world? You just kind of look up, okay, how do you cross borders? Uh, what visas do you need? What's the climate like? And then the rest of it is kind of, you just got to go and like screw up a million times. And that first month of walking, I didn't know what roads to walk. I was walking these roads that were too small and sinuous and cars were almost hitting me. And then I'm walking these massive roads where it's so stressful and loud. And so even something as simple as that was something I needed to figure out. And then how do you find a place to sleep each night? You know, there's times where I slept basically out in the open because I couldn't find somewhere and I have all these mosquitoes biting me through the night or I sleep next to this like air conditioner next to a church and it wakes me up constantly and I sleep terribly or I sleep next to train tracks and the same thing happens. So all these little things that I really think there's no other way but to just go through it and figure out how to do it. Right. 